Hello guys, it is me again, it's Fan 34 and welcome back to another video, and I have been tagged once again. I was tagged once again by uh, Jason, Horrific Nightmares JM, to do this tag, and um, this tag was actually created originally by Movie Freak. Um, this is a Nightmare on Elm Street tag, and um, pretty much... Um, everybody else that's pretty much been tagged, I would have tagged myself, but everybody else has already been tagged. I know Jason tagged, uh, Rob, and I think he tagged Alex as well. I cannot remember for sure off the top of my head, but, um, but, you know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tag two people who I haven't seen tagged yet. Um, I'm gonna tag, uh, I, I don't think they've been tagged yet, but I'll just, but if they are, then I apologize, but, um, I'm going to tag Metal Horror Pack, my good friend Justin, and uh, Last Venom 76. So I'm going to tag those two guys. And um, uh, everybody out there, uh, Jason, you know, Movie Freak, <clears throat> Lisa, Sean, Rob, Alex, everybody out there, um, hope you, I hope you guys enjoy my answers to these uh, eight questions by this tag created by uh, Movie Freak. So let's get started. Question number one. What is your favorite and least favorite film of the franchise, and why? Without a doubt, my favorite film is Without a Doubt, the original. Just a classic, you know, Robert Englund, the first time you get to see him as Freddy, Heather Langenkamp, Johnny Depp, John Saxon, you know, just a really good cast. The Sin is such a great, cool horror film about a guy who comes after you in your dreams, and all that stuff. I mean, it has so many great iconic moments when Nancy's in the hallway at school and she sees the bag, uh, body bag getting dragged in the hallway. You know, Johnny Depp's death getting sucked into the bed. You know, the the woman, the girl getting thrown around the room, around the room. She's like levitating and things like that. I mean, just so iconic. Just such a, iconic scenes in the film. Just a classic. That's why the original film is my favorite. My least favorite is Without a Doubt, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, Part 6, <clears throat> because that was really a film that was just too corny and cartoonish and way too comedic for my own taste. Um, that was really just the one that just was really silly and corny and things like that, so that's Without a Doubt, my least favorite. And that's definitely the film I've watched the least of the franchise. That's up there with part five for the ones I've watched the least. <clears throat> Question number two. Which movie has the best Freddy? That's with that doubt the original one. I mean, the sequels, you know, Freddy had a lot of really great, funny one-liners. I mean, I, that's that Freddy, that Freddy's really good, too, when he has those one-liners. But to me, though, the first film had the best Freddy Krueger. Because Robert Englund as Freddy Krueger in that film was really dark, very just a really dark character, really terrifying, really creepy, and I, I just think that was the best performance that Robert Englund gave as Frank Krueger. I mean, you cannot top the, in my opinion, the performance of Robert Englund in the first film. I mean, it's really difficult to top that performance. It's just really creepy and dark and really terrifying. I uh, really enjoyed Robert Englund in that in the first film. So that's what that yeah, my favorite Freddy. Question number three, did you mind the humor as the sequels progressed? I actually did not mind the humor at all, because Freddy Krueger had a lot of really great one-liners, especially in, movie, like in part four and things like that. Because when I, when I put some thought into this question when they <clears throat> about the humor, I got a feeling that like the directors kind of thought to themselves, you know what, we, we can't top the original film. There's no way we can top the original. So we're going to do something different. So we're going to, you know, make it a little bit more humorous, because we know we can't top the original film. And they're right. And I kind of, I think that kind of goes with the same thing when you look at um, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre by Toby Hooper. When Toby Hooper directed um, Part 2, I think 12 years later in 86, he probably thought to himself, you know what, I can't top my original horror, horror classic. And he's right, so that's why he made Part 2 a, a dark comedy film. Because he knows that he can't top the original film. It, it's really difficult to do that. So, that's why I don't mind 
the humor as the films progress because I think Freddy Krueger gave a lot of really great one-liners, especially in part four. Um, so that's what I have my answer to that one. Question number four, what are some of your favorite kills? <clears throat> some of my favorite kills in the film, in the, in the franchise, I really enjoy, um, you know, Johnny Depp's death in the first film with him getting sucked into the bed. Uh, in part two, when Freddy Krueger is like slaughtering all those people at the party, you know, that was a lot of fun. Uh, part four, you know, the character of Joey in the waterbed, that was a fun one. And even part five, you know, part five is not part five is one of my least favorite films in the franchise, but I still like some of the kills in that film. You know, the one girl getting stuffed with food, another guy getting trapped in like a, like one of those like comic strip comic book things. Um, and of course, you know, and of course, in the original film, the character of like, Tina getting thrown around the room and things like that. <clears throat> Just a lot of there was there's a lot of good ones, a lot of good. Um, question number five. Robert Englund is irreplaceable, but if you had to, who would you cast as Freddy Krueger? Interesting enough, I would have to go with a, a Doug Jones. This is Doug Jones is a guy who is known for playing, this, has been in so many films in his career. Like, he plays, like, he's always in, like, those, like, creature-looking characters. Like, he, he was, I know he was in Bye Bye Man, but he was the best part about Bye Bye Man, to be honest. But, um... Doug Jones, you look at him, he was in Hocus Pocus as, like, the zombie character that helps out the main people in the film, from the witches, um, he, Pan's Labyrinth, uh, the Hellboy movies, I mean, Doug Jones, and when you look at Doug Jones, like, you know, he's, like, he plays some really terrifying characters, and I think Doug Jones would be a great choice if I had to choose, if Robert Englund couldn't play Freddy Krueger. I would have to go with Doug Jones, but Robert Englund, like they said in this question, is pretty much irreplaceable as um, Freddy. Uh, question number six, was Freddy vs. Jason worth the wait? What would you have done differently? Uh, now, for me, uh, was Freddy vs. Jason worth the wait? Well, I've, I had to wait a long time to see this film, because when it came out back in 2003, I was only nine years old, and I wasn't old enough to see it yet. So, um, I didn't really see it until, like, um, when I was in, like, in high school, and, uh, I, so, and I, and I watched it for the first time, and I, and I really did enjoy, I really do enjoy the film, uh, um, so, do I, do I think it was worth the wait? I think it was, um, sure, there were some things that could have been done a little bit better, like, a little bit, like, uh, differently, I'll get to that in a minute, but, uh, I think it was worth the wait, because, you know, the, the whole finale fight between Freddy and Jason is really gruesome. It's a really great final confrontation. Uh, you, have, you know, Jason and Freddy, you know, have some good moments in the film as well. And things like that. Now, some of the things that I would have done differently, maybe, probably get a better... You know what I would have done differently here? I think, um... What, what, what I would have done differently is mainly one thing, because everything else about the film I pretty much like, but uh, the one thing I, I would have done differently is probably put a different cast in the film, because I think the cast in this film is kind of weaker compared to the other films of both the Jason films and the Freddy films. Maybe it would have been kind of cool if, like, maybe for a Freddy vs. Jason movie, they would, since, they would, since the, it's a crossover maybe they can have some of the surviving characters from the um, two franchises. Maybe, like, Nancy and uh, Alice, and then you can have people, like, from the from the Jason films, you can people have people like, you know, uh, Jenny or uh, Tina, Laura Park Lincoln's character from Part 7, or Dana Kimmel, who played Chris in Part 3, or Trish, things like that. Maybe they would come together because they, when they realize that Freddy and Jason are, have come back, you know, maybe they can cross over and maybe team up together to take down both of their uh, horror icon characters. And I think that'd be kind of cool, because the story in the film is... It's, it, it's an alright story, but it was probably the best story, like, out of all the ideas they have, when you look at um, all the ideas they had for a story. This was probably the... I'm glad they went with this one, because of all the other ideas they have, which were pretty ridiculous about 
think Jason going on trial and things like that. It was just really weird. But uh, but that was like the one thing I would do uh, differently with Freddy vs. Jason. Maybe have a with those crossover of the surviving cast members from the other from the films in the franchise, like surviving characters. That'd be like awesome. Question number seven, who was the best final girl? That's without a doubt, Nancy. I mean, I really enjoy, you know, uh, uh, Alice and all that stuff, but I have to go with Nancy just because, you know, the original film's a classic. She was in part three as well. You know, I just love the character of Nancy, played by Heather Langenkamp. That's without a doubt my favorite final girl. And the last question is question number eight, what are some of your favorite sequels? I, if I had to choose, uh, I'm going to choose three. My favorite sequels are part two, three, and four. Part five, part five, I'm not the biggest fan of. Part six is my least favorite. Part seven, I do like, but out of the ones I watch the most for sequels, that have to go with part two, three, and four. You know, part three, the Dream Warriors is just so good. Directed by Chuck Russell, same guy that did um, Eraser with Arnold. Uh, I think he went on to. Uh, I think he had a hand in Collateral, too, with Tom Cruise and Jamie Foxx, which is pretty cool. He directed The Mask with Jim Carrey. Uh, I just really I just really love that sequel. It's a really good cast. Patricia Arquette, Lawrence Fishburne, things like that. Part 4, of course, you have Tuesday Night and Lisa Wilcox. Um, really love that one, too. And Part 2, I think, is very underrated about Freddy being in the real world. I just really think that one was a very underrated one. So, um... There you have it. So those are my answers to these uh, questions. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you guys next time. All right, guys. Take care. <clears throat> Excuse me.